Hey guys, we're back to aircraft kits this week. Uh, we're going to be looking at Ravel's 132nd scale P51B. Now, um, thing to note about this kit, it is an older kit. Um, checked on it and it was originally, at least this particular one, copyrighted in the 80s. So, we are going to be dealing with um, features from that era. So, let's go ahead and pop it open and take a look at her. Get these out of the way. Now, uh, one thing immediately jumps out is obviously the raised uh, detailing on it. And what's interesting to note, though, is here, as in the front, as you get lower, the level of detailing um, so basically almost fades away, suggesting you know, this particular one was made... Uh, late in the life of the mold. So that is something to be aware of. Some of the detailing may be disappearing or be lost entirely on your copy. No, I bought this new, so that is something to be aware of. Um, similarly, we also has the kit has a similar uh, texture to the plastic as the uh, 30 second scale Corsair we reviewed uh, previously. So, beyond that, though, um, another thing I noticed, and aside from this odd sticker, I don't know if this is related to the buyout of Ravel by Ravel Germany and some of the stuff going on there, but that is something that you'll need to remove before you paint. Uh, but big thing on this kit is the ejector pen marks. They are everywhere, and you can especially see them. Hopefully, it shows up on camera. Here on the fuselage halves. Now, the, some of them are pretty big and deep, but such as here on the gear, main gear doors, they're going to take a lot of cleaning up to, you know, fix up. So that is something to be aware of. Uh, you can more so see it here on the outer uh, main gear doors, because getting in there to clean that up is going to be very difficult. So it's something to be aware of. Uh, continuing on, we've got obviously our upper cowling, uh, which is nice that they do include the option to display the engine. Uh, I don't know how many people will. Uh, we'll get to the engine in a minute. But it's a nice inclusion. Uh, we got our main gear wheels, main gear, uh, which overall is, no, it's okay. It could be more detailed, but not going to complain too much there, uh, as well as our seat back. Again, we do have some injector pin issues, but it's not too terrible there. Uh, moving on, we've got our engine, which they it's nice that they do include it. Uh, detailing level of it, not the greatest, but at the same time, you now out of box, not going to complain too much there. Now, uh, again, ejector pin marks on the uh, floor of the uh, cockpit. So that is something to be aware of. You'll need to clean up. Uh, side panels for the cockpit aren't too bad. Um, I was actually pre bleh, pleasantly surprised here. Um, with a little painting, it should build up nicely. Um, you do have, again, ejector pin marks, so you will need to address those. Uh, Reader stack for the back of the cockpit, nicely done. Uh, exhausts are not the greatest, so I would say if you're going to spend money, you know, pick up a nice aftermarket exhaust set since that's probably going to be what's ultimately seen. Uh, beyond that, though, not a whole lot to add here. Now, moving on to our main underwing halves, which you know, should hopefully give a great sense of scale for just how big this thing will be, as well as our spinner, which thankfully we don't have ejector pin marks. They fortunately did not do that on the spinner, so that should help a little. Uh, gear detailing, main gear detailing, or excuse me, main gear bay detailing is sparse, but they do give you a little bit to work with. Uh, continuing on, we've got our tail gear as well as tail wheel and our main gear hubcaps. Not a whole lot there. 
couple of other odds and end parts for detailing kit up as well as our tail gear uh bay doors yeah excuse me and uh, next up we've got our upper wing halves uh do note that they do include these latching pins so that does force you to have to um, attach these to the lower wing halves prior to mating it with the fuselage so that is something to be aware of we'll look at that a little more when we get into instructions now last but not and actually least is the clear parts this is where the kit drops the ball big time they are very thick not the clearest and just they're not good um, this is another area if you can find a uh, vacuum form replacement get it mm. Uh, beyond that, thankfully, there was no ejecta pins marks on the clear sections themselves, so that's thankful. But yeah, they're not very good. Detailing is poor. Um, let me see if this will show up. Uh, trying to... Hopefully this is, will ultimately come out, but yeah, it, it's not the greatest. So let's get these parts back in and then we'll move on with the instructions or decals, sorry. Uh, you get markings for two different aircraft, uh, one uh, Miss Lace and the other Berlin Express, which is on the box art. Overall decals are all right. They're good register. Uh, sharp, not a whole lot to say. They should go down pretty easily, uh, say for a couple of spots, but a couple of passes of softening fluid should do the trick on them. Now, moving on to the instructions. Uh, construction begins with the engine. Unfortunately, this is one area I think would have been nice if they allowed you not to have to do the engine and leave it as an option. But unfortunately, between the exhaust stats would stick out from it and how they do the uh, mounting for the prop, you are going to have to build it up. You may not need to paint it totally, but you do need to attach it. Uh, continuing on, building up the cockpit as well as detailing the pilot figure, which and they let mittens, but it's not the greatest, but not going to complain there. Um, then building up the sidewalls, cockpit, and all that into the aircraft itself, uh, attaching the tail gear and other odds and ends. And I do like that they do show you how to uh, do it if you want to do it with the wheels up. That's a nice inclusion. Uh, continuing from there, not a whole lot. Now, it's here that we do run into a bit of a tricky area, uh, getting this uh, wing and fuselage sections to mate. That How they get, did it is problematic, and just trying to get that to align and lock together is probably going to take you a, a couple of tries. You might luck out and get first try, but yeah, it is something to be aware of and uh, prepare for. Uh, beyond that, the only other section that's going to give you a headache is building up this um, canopy and just how they chose to do it is going to be a bit of a pain. It would have been nice if they gave you the parts necessary as single pieces to build it up as opposed to, you know, one piece. Now, as I said, you get options for two different uh, aircraft, uh, Berlin Express, which is the cover art, and a Miss Lace. Uh, overall, I would say this is probably the better to go with, um, personally, just because you're not going to have to deal with uh, masking all the invasion stripes, but that's just me. Uh, lastly, they do give you a full instruction sheet for all the stenciling, which is a nice inclusion. 
So, overall, it is an older kit. So we do need to take that with a bit of grain of salt. I, you can also get this kit pretty cheaply. Um, I picked this up at Hobby Lobby um, with 40% off coupon, so it was basically 15 bucks. So this kit is definitely not one I would go with if you want to do full contest mode. I would consider this definitely for someone who's more junior, who's still learning the skill. Definitely a good one for people in that category. I would also recommend it for someone who's just looking for a full set of Mustangs in this scale. But again, for the price, you really can't complain too much. You know, at 15 bucks in today's world, it's pretty cheap as far as kits go, especially in 30 second scale. So it's definitely one to consider. It's got a lot of flaws, but you know, you can, it's one that's easy enough that you can overcome those flaws, still build a halfway decent kit. So that was a look at Ravel's 132nd scale P51B Mustang. So until next time.